Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okutaya here at Telecom Exchange NYC, fabulous hotel, W. Hoboken. Joining me here today, my good friend, Mr. Todd Coleman, the CEO and President of eStructure. Todd, welcome back to JSA TV. Jamie, thanks as always for having me. Oh, we love having you. You're such a thought leader in our industry. And uh, today is uh, an, another wonderful day where we're having you join us on a panel discussing the best practices for partnerships in next generation network infrastructure. Can you give us a little preview of what we may hear from you? Yeah, well, for us, I mean, you know, fundamentally, it's it's next generation partnerships are interesting in terms of the infrastructure and there's new technology coming out. And so how you work with those various partners on bringing that technology in is important and we're doing that. And there's lots of hype around 5G and other new technologies coming out where those partnerships are critical. For us, it's kind of more fundamental. And that is, how do you reach out as an organization and build those relationships? Because at the end of the day, we like to think of ourselves as infrastructure providers, but more fundamentally, people do business with people that they know and they trust. And so for us, it's about building those relationships that go across multiple organizations. It's, it's about being at events like this where we're meeting other people that we might not necessarily meet in our everyday lives and figuring out how we can come together to either support one another, share information, fundamentally build up additional or new customer channels, etc. And so, you know, fundamental to our organization is those relationships. And that's not just limited to me or our sales team. That goes throughout our entire organization. That goes down to the technician on the front lines, greeting the, the customer representative as they come through the door of our data center, working with them on whether it's working with their equipment, new installations, figuring out what they have going on in their business, how our business can potentially work with them. And, and beyond that, it's not just limited to how do we gain more revenue or more market traction with that customer, but how do we work together to go run at different opportunities or challenges that might not have anything to do with our revenue stream? Right. How can we be better together? Correct. Um, and, and for sure, there is such a trend of, of hyperscalers and other types of uh, enterprise network operators who are moving north to Canada and, and finding homes at the eStructure data, data center. So you clearly know what to do in there. A good person to be on that panel for sure. Similarly, we should say congratulations because you have been shortlisted to for the Data Cloud Excellence in Regional Data Centers in the Americas Award, which we're really excited about. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, well deserved. We all know Canada, of course, uh, shirking in terms of data center market share. What are your thoughts on this trend and how are you serving your customers, not only the regions you have physical uh, data centers, but globally? Yeah, so I mean, one of the reasons why we, we planted and headquartered eStructure in Canada and, and fundamentally have said, look, we're, we're a Canadian, pan-Canadian company and we're going after the Canadian business. Doesn't mean we won't take geographic left turns or right turns into other regions, but we're primarily focused on Canada because it has been underserved. And we believed so a couple of years ago when we started eStructure and even before that, that Canada was underserved, but it was going to be a growing population. And, and Canada being at the forefront of data sovereignty and requiring data be north of the border Order, and obviously geopolitical environment in the US and other areas has helped with that. So we're seeing the demand curve, albeit you know, as a total percentage of, of the data center demand, Canada's still relatively small. But in terms of its growth rate, it's, it's been fairly significant, particularly on the eastern side of Canada, namely Montreal. Uh, you know, we're, we're working with customers. Today we have customers from 32 different countries in our customer base. So, you know, 800-ish customers, 32 different countries. And so we are as global as we can be while still being headquartered and operational in, in Canada. And so we spend a lot of time thinking about those uh, customers, the segmentation, how do we attract those new customers into our facility and tell our pan-Canadian story. And so, you know, we do that several ways. Obviously, building customer relationships, direct customer relationships is important. Uh, you talked about the hyperscalers, but the reality of it is there's only so many hyperscalers, right? Mm -hmm. I can only go meet with, you know, one, two, three, four, fifth largest cloud provider in the world, uh, as much as I'd love to meet with them every single day and tell our story, that's just not reality. And so we got a whole breadth of customers that we need to go after, target, pitch, tell our story, and, and tell them the benefits of coming into Canada from a data center perspective. And so, you know, for us, that's building up the direct sales uh, channel, which we're doing 
fairly uh, actively this year, top priority. Uh, in, in terms of the indirect, you and I have talked about this before. We have a channel partners program. We've been talking about it for six months, and so we finally launched that channel partners program. The reality of it is we soft launched it for the last 12 or 18 months, trying to make sure that it was ready for prime time. Sure. Channel partner program is highly dependent on scale responsiveness. How quick and easy can you make it for the channel partner, whether they're a referral partner or a reseller, to do business with you? How do you handle channel conflict? And for us, you know, it's tantamount to who we are, which is transparency. Mm -hmm. You know, we may not always agree, but we're open to the dialogue. And so we want to make sure that we have all those rules and guidelines in place so there's no surprises. So we're excited to launch that channel partners program. We got training rolling out. We got collateral ready. Uh, and frankly, we've already been onboarding new partners, so we're really excited about what the opportunity brings with, with respect to that. Sounds like, I don't know, you guys are revving up for something big. Can you, uh, can you <laughs> tell us? always <laughs> I mean, we're talking explosive. Tell <laughs> us, <laughs> tell us what you, you really, yeah, scoop, tell us what I you're really doing, Todd. Like I took like a true serum <laughs> pill before I come here. But so we do have a lot going on. And so the build up to that is we have been very act. I mean, we got a couple things that I'll, I'll tell you about. And there's a couple things that I'll, I'll save for next time, yeah. maybe. Uh, but we've been, we've really been actively recruiting someone to come in and truly drive our go-to-market strategy. Someone that eats, sleeps, breathes, sales, marketing, customers, how our product set goes to the market, how we bring those customers in, how we take care of them from a customer touch perspective. And so uh, I've never been you know, I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm really excited about the team that we've built. Uh, I'm honored that they're here and they're, they're building this business along with me. Uh, and I'm, I'm equally honored to, to let you know that uh, we've hired a chief commercial officer. Jamie Leverton is joining our company. Uh, she is a fantastic thought leader in the industry. She's Canadian, born and raised. Uh, and uh, she's someone that I've watched from afar for a long, long time. And I've, I've spent a lot of time along with the rest of the team and our board uh, in f making sure that we hire the right person. Uh, and as li I like to joke around, uh, you know, there's, there's trends and fads going on and there's movements and those are all, you know, really, really important. But for us, it's always about hiring the best. And we have gone out of our way to hire the best, whether it's our CFO, our head of legal, our head of product, our head of ops, and now our head of commercial. So uh, Jamie is, is coming on board. And we're so excited to have her. Well, she has such a proven track record, particularly uh, in, in Canada. And uh, I mean, we've known uh, about her and have had her on our own panels in JSA TV uh, for, for several years now. She's just, she's a force to be reckoned with. So she is a force. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to. There's a tornado coming to East Structure. Yeah. It's Jamie Leverton. <laughs> Who do I interview first? <laughs> Todd or Jamie, we're going to have to, we'll have to do, yeah. Great, good. great pump to have. Beyond that, you know, your lead-in, uh, we have other things going on. So we're we're in the, you know, we've just finalized a new debt facility, and so we had a, uh, we just increased our, our debt facility to 170 million dollars, uh, thanks to our financial partners who have believed in our business uh, since the beginning, and so we're not about to let them down. Uh, but re reality of that is, it's financial dry powder to go on and do bigger and better things, and uh, stay tuned. So now they've got even more cash to go <laughs> rule the world, and, and starting with Canada. We're taking one province at a time. <laughs> yeah. uh, Todd, always exciting to, uh, to, to check in with you and see what you have uh, on the agenda. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV. Happy networking.